I want to I want to preach part three. Man, this word is like staring in me really deep right now, and um, I, I'm so thankful that God trusts me to deliver what He's downloaded in me. But here's what I need y'all to do: Don't play church. I need y'all to be the church. I need y'all to lean in, and I need y'all to li- listen to what God is saying. And, and I promise you, watch, if you lean in and you give God your attention, you will leave changed. So if you don't leave changed today, you didn't listen. You didn't listen. So let me remind you about the lessons that we have learned from a donkey. <laughs> I love this. And what qualifies me and you to be used by God. And I'm going to teach a little bit, I'm going to preach a little bit, and then we're going to celebrate a lot. Amen. The lesson we can learn from a donkey, what qualifies me and you to be used by God. How many of y'all want to be used by God? Oh, yeah. yeah, watch this. If your hand's not up, you got exactly what you want. Yeah. You'll be a good little church member. You'll be a charter church member. You'll grow old in church. You'll go to vacation Bible school, teach Sunday school, and nothing will transition in your life. we got too many of those people in churches today. So I'm going to be used by God. And I do not apologize for what the Holy Ghost is doing in Brian Rafferty. He's crazy about me and I'm crazy about him. Yeah, so what qualifies me and you to be used by God? I told you the first thing, great blessings come from great burdens. Woo! I want to be blessed, so you better be able to carry a burden. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm going to, I've got it. No, listen to me. You better be able to carry a burden. You want to be blessed, you better be able to carry a burden. Number two, God calls the unqualified. Ooh. How do you know, Brian? Because I'm y'all's preacher. God qual- calls the unqualified. Listen, alphabets in front of a name or behind a name does not impress God. Baptists don't impress God. There's going to be Baptists in hell, Pentecostal in hell. There's going to be Baptists in heaven. Watch this. God ain't worried about your denomination. He's worried about if he's your denominator. Who would have preach, Courtney? Uh. So uh, let me give you the third thing in this story, Matthew 21, that teaches me, that taught me about lessons from a donkey. My granny used to say it like this. I talk about granny a lot because, man, she was a, a great woman of God. She used to say, that blesses the fire out of me. And I, I, and I still really don't know what that means. But, but I remember granny would just say, "Woo, that blessed the fire out of me. And so this blessed the fire out of me. And so I want to give you the third lesson we can learn from a donkey. Y'all ready? Somebody say, I'm ready. ready. All right, here we go. Number three. You carry the burden, but God will do the heavy lifting. (laughs) Y'all don't even know. So in other words, when we get in a situation, listen to me. When it's too heavy for us to carry, God said, don't worry. He didn't say, don't worry, be happy. He just said, don't worry because I'm the one that will do the lifting. Somebody say, thank you, God. Yeah, yeah. I I know we got Daryl Isaacs. And I know Daryl Isaac is a heavy hitter. But I know a man's name is better than Daryl. His name is Jesus Christ. And he's the heavy lifter. Hey, I worked hard on this. Don't look at me like that. I worked hard on this. Daryl Isaac's a heavy hitter. God's the heavy lifter. He's the heavy lifter. And I, I can hear some of you say, well, that sounds really good, preacher. Just prove it. Okay, I will. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 through 6. I feel the Holy Ghost in here today, boy. It's good. Mm. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 6. The Bible I'm reading now, the New King James. It says, surely, watch this. He has bore our griefs. Oh, this is so good. And carried our sorrows. He bore our grief and he carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken. Some of you are living like God has been stricken. You're you're, you're trying to do what God's telling you he can do. Smitten by God and afflicted. But he was, I love this. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. 
The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. I'll say that again. And by his stripes we are healed. We're all like sheep that have gone astray. We're all gone astray. You're not greater, you're not lesser. We've all, all of us, have gone astray. But watch this. We have turned to everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. If that don't make you shout in this house, nothing will. You are free and free indeed. You are forgiven and forgiven indeed. You are loved and loved indeed. You are highly favored and highly favored indeed. Mm. Somebody say amen. amen. Here's what I'm preaching. Here's what I'm preaching saying this morning. Y'all listen. God's grace will lighten the load. God's grace Y'all think God just saved you and said, good luck? You think God says, I, I, I died, I put my son on the cross, and good luck trying to live this life? Thank you. I got a child in here preaching better than some of you adults. No, when he died, he died for all your ugliness. He died for all your sins. He died for your healing. If he can save you, he can heal you in Jesus' name. God says, let me do the heavy lifting. Here's another verse in case some of you, I write that, I preach to myself when I write this stuff. Brian, I wrote this, Brian, if you, if, if you don't believe that, here's you another verse. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. We quote this, we quote this, we quote this. I, don't, I want you to quit quoting this and quoting this and quoting this and start believing this and believing this and believing this. Watch. Come to me. Come to me. Y'all hear me? Everybody, listen, I praise God y'all got friends, but your friends are not Jesus. I praise God I'm your pastor, but I'm not God Jr. He said, if you're heavy, if you're burdened down, if you're not feeling too good, he said, call on me, come unto me. And watch what he says. I might give you rest. Is, is Jesus Christ, is he a liar? No, he's not a liar. If he's a liar, we're all going to hell. I vote today, and I vote unanimously that he tells truth. He says, if you're burdened, if you've got a heavy load on your life, if you can't take it no more, if you're trying to give up, if you would just come unto me, I'll give you rest. It is okay to, watch me, it is okay to say no. It is okay not to work all the stinking time. Everybody say rest. Everybody say rest. Everybody say, God, give me rest. What if I told you the only way you're going to have God rest is if you go to God? Some of you are trying to find comfort in work. Some of you are trying to find comfort in activities and sports. Some of you are trying everything in your, in your being, but you're not going to God. So when I look at the church today that is declining, 10, over 10,000 churches have shut their door during COVID. We're tired. We can't take it no more. You know what that tells me? They're trying to do it man's way. If we'll just chill out. Now, Corn, I never thought I'd say this. If we would just chill out. And let God be God all by himself. Let him do the lifting. You just let him get on your back. And he'll say, right, left. That's all you got to do. We have complicated church. We have complicated the gifts. We have complicated tongues and prophecy. And, all, and God's sitting there going, it's my gift, and I want to give it to you, but if you don't want it, and you're going to complicate it, you're never going to open it, I'll take it back. So watch this, man. It's so good. Could it be the reason? Oh, let me read this song. And I will, I will oh, let me read this. Put that back up there, because I want them to see this. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come to me, all of you, all of all you, who are weary Tired, wore down, stressed out, burdened, 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 and I will give you rest. I will 
give you rest. I, he, God says, I will take the burden, hallelujah, from you. I will do the heavy lifting in your life. Could it be the reason some of you, and I'm speaking to me too, I'm speaking to me too, I'm not pointing fingers because God ministers to me like crazy during these sermons. Could it be the reason why we are so tired, are so burdened, so weary, so tore up, is because you're carrying things you were never meant to carry. I work so hard on this and y'all just going. The reason why some of you are tired, you're wore out. You're not sleeping good at night. You're biting your fingernails off. You're a rat on acid. Man, it's so true. Listen to me. We are carrying things that we were never meant to carry. Let God handle your messed up family. Let God, hallelujah, let God take care of your children that are dysfunctional. Let God take care of Elkhorn. Let God take care of the pastor. Let God, let God take care of all this stuff. He's God, right? He's sovereign, right? I want to hear y'all. Is he God? Is he sovereign? Is he God and is he sovereign? Then let him do his dang job. I mean, number two. No, number four. I told y'all I had five. Five points in three weeks. That's not too bad. Here, this is going to help somebody. Sure, I feel the Holy Ghost. Number four. God looks for endurance, not speed. Lessons we can learn from a donkey. This is truth. Watch, this is so true. God looks for endurance, not speed. Listen to me. This is so good. A donkey is built for endurance, not speed. And I personally believe, and I don't want y'all to get mad at me, but I want to speak life over you. I want to speak truth over you. That we can disarm the enemy from the lies that's in the local churches. It's got to be preached. Somebody's got to take a licking and keep on ticking. Somebody's got to carry the burden of ministry upon their life and say, guys... Listen, it's not that you're a bad person. It's just we've been doing it wrong. You almost got to reprogram the 21st century church. Because we've done it granny's way. And mama's way. And southern Baptist way. I'm looking for a church, hallelujah, that we're doing God's way. I ain't worried about this stuff. What does God say about it? What does God say about it? Whew. Here's why I personally believe God chose a donkey and not a stallion. It teaches me, it should teach us, that if God is going to use us, he said, I don't want you to make a quick sprint. And then six months in your ministry, in your journey with Christ, you're nowhere to be found. Hmm. We got too many Christians that are, are running sprints. And boy, let me tell you, my leadership, I can hear my leadership right now. I hope he hears his own self preaching. You daggone right, I do. I'm learning. I'm still a student of the Word of God. And I'm learning that God says, Brian, you're running a marathon, not a sprint. You're running a marathon. Elkhorn is 150 years old. That is not a sprint church. That is a marathon church. That when hell, I feel the Holy Ghost. That when hell come in her and disorder come in her and some went north and some went east and some went south and some went west. You had the, you, you had the Christian says, I can carry a burden. I know what it's like to take a licking and keep on ticking. I'm going to carry it. I'm going to endure and I'm going to watch God do a new thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So watch out for ministries. I wrote this in my own notes because I've got to be very careful because I'm still praying for the gift of discernment. Come on, Dana, say amen. My wife prays that over my life every day. Lord, touch that hard head. She's still laying hands on me though. Hey, never mind. It's all right, it's all right. 
Y'all hired me, so put up with it. Amen? Listen. Watch out for ministries that just pop up. Listen to me. I'm trying to help all of us. I call that pop-up ministries. Watch out for the pop-up Christians who walk into a church and don't know anything about the church, but they got a better idea. Y'all know my biggest battle was your pastor? It's not with leadership. My biggest battle is people with the pop-up ministries. Somebody who don't even know nothing about Elkhorn. How we jive. How we work. How we worship. But they'll come in and try to rewrite everything. And I'm like, yes, listen. If following the Bible's wrong, we're all wrong. Because we watch, lean in. We believe in all the Bible. We don't leave anything out at Elkhorn. And watch this, we don't change for man because the man's hands upon us. You see what I'm saying? Be careful for pop-up ministries. Y'all listen to me, it's going to help some of you, it helps me. Be careful of the pop-up Christians. Because here's what I've noticed after 24 years of ministry. Y'all ready for this? Say, what do you know, preacher? Uh, you ready to say, what do you know, preacher? Here's what I know. The first sign of trouble, the first sign of, 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 of a burden on a church those pop-up ministries will be the first one to walk out. They'll walk out. They'll walk out. Listen to me. God looks for endurance, not speed. Y'all hear me? Somebody say, I hear you, preacher. Ecclesiastes 9-11. Ecclesiastes 9-11. The Bible says it's so good. Here's why it backs up what I just spoke. The race is not to the swift. The race is not to the swift. I'm learning this. I'm learning this. Hey, would Ryan will always tell you, Rafferty would just take off running. Don't even know where he's going. Then he'll look back and say, where are we going, coach? I, I, I've, I've been like that. But watch. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm, I'm wrong. But watch this. I'm learning that this race that we're on, it is a journey. My mama prayed for 12 years for my daddy to be saved and born again and know Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Now, it took a massive heart attack. It took a massive heart attack. You say, Brian, did God do that? No, God allowed that. Because God was more concerned about his eternity than his fleshly bones here on earth. God, watch, hallelujah, God would do whatever it takes to grow his kingdom. The problem with churches Problem with Rafferty. A lot of us in here today. We want a quick fix. We want a microwave generation. In the old saying, we serve a crock pot God. He owns the crock pot. He'll do what he'll boil the water when he wants to boil the water. Hallelujah. That's why God chose the donkey. Listen to me. The donkey gets under the load. You know what we need at this church? We need some donkeys. I couldn't wait to call y'all donkey. We need some people. You ain't gonna get it your way. Watch it. I don't, I'm the pastor of this church. And man, I don't get it my way. Here's and watch this. I watch. I finally realized this. I don't come to church to get it my way. I don't come to church to get it my way. I don't come to church to get it my way. We need some donkey Christians. Look at you, look at you never again say, you look like a donkey. That's enough. I said one time. Y'all done turned to two or three people. Y'all don't all do it every Sunday. <laughs> oh, I got to be good. Help me, Holy Ghost. We need some, we need some load-bearing people. We need some people that's willing to get under some load. All right. Whoever who you bring. Donna, sign that joker up. And that's the way, watch. That's the way we all should be. If you're born again and saved and know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, there's got to come a time in your life to say, you know what? It's not about me, but I can carry a load. I can get under a burden. I can bless somebody. I can drive a van. I can teach a class. I can do something. No, don't, don't tell me that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, but you don't know how to carry a load. Oh, okay. Let me give you something else. 
My favorite little animal that made it to the ark was a snail. Because I can see the zebra just zipping by the little snail. I can see, y'all, this is the way I preach. This is the way I get it. I, yeah, I can see the deer or the gazelle. There's a little snail. And there goes the gazelle. The snail and the gazelle. That's got to go somewhere. And the gazelle just passed the little snail. And then I see the lion just zip past the little snail. And there was two little snails. And I can, I can see in my spirit, in my mind, them little snails. Can y'all imagine how long it took a snail to make it on the ark? It wasn't a lion. It wasn't a zebra. But I can see one of them little snails. Look over at the other little snail and say, Margaret. This is my store, my store. I can preach how I need to preach it. Margaret. <laughs> this is good, y'all. And Margaret says, what, what do you want there? And he says, well, here's all I know, Margaret. See, I believe, I believe animals could talk back then. A snake could talk to... Y'all ain't never read that chapter. A snake had a conversation with Eve. Well, I don't believe it. And a donkey talked. I still see a bunch of donkeys talking. <laughs> Y'all smile. Good God. No one, nobody will come to church. And that little snail said, Margaret, I know we're not the fastest. I know we're, we're not the cutest. We're probably one of the smallest animals that's going to be on the ark. But God said that that door of that ark will not shut till we get on it. Can I preach this for a minute? We're running a marathon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we may look like a donkey, but we need the spirit of a snail. And I don't know how this world, I know how it's going to end according to the Bible. And that's all that really matters to me. The latter end is going to be better than the beginning. I'll see signs and wonders and miracles. We may not have it today, the 28th day of March, but I see something. I see a cloud forming. I see some rain getting ready to come down on this house. Margaret, 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 I don't know how it's going to get here or when it's going to get here, but I'm going to have the spirit of endurance until I hear the ark's door shut. I need some people that has the spirit of a snail to say, you know what? I may have not received my healing right now, but my healing's coming. I may not. Yeah, I don't see. I don't really care. I'm to the point in my life, I don't really care what you think about me. I used to. People used to dictate my sermons. Because if this guy was mad at me, what I was preaching, I'd, I'd twist it just a little to make y'all happy. And then it made them mad. And then I was sitting there going, okay, God, what do I do about the right, the middle, the other middle, and the left? And when you got people of all walks of life, come from all different seasons, it is hard to bring a word that's going to meet everybody. But I know one that can bring a word that can meet everybody. And his name is Jesus. He's, his name is Jesus. His name is you. Before I go to the last point, I want you to look at your neighbor. We're going to make this sound. I've got Facebook family sitting there going, man, I like watching them from a distance. Look at your neighbor and say, you still look like a donkey. But you have the spirit of a snail. Yeah. You still look like a donkey. But now you have the spirit of a snail. Y'all getting this word? Are y'all getting this word? Listen to me. Just because your children have not come home. Don't mean that they're not coming home. Just because you got up this morning, you had to check your sugar diabetes, and it was 200, doesn't mean that God's not having a cure five years down the road. Just, just because we've not received the million dollars yet, don't mean that the check's not in the mail. See, I believe different. you got to have the spirit of a snail, Margaret. I feel the Holy Ghost. Man, I love y'all so much. Because I believe y'all are getting this. Yeah. Let me give you number five and I'm out of here. Number five. Ooh, this is so good. 
And God had to work with me through this one. Number five. God cannot use you until you get untied. Yeah, I'm going to leave it up there. Go, you note takers, go ahead and write that down. God cannot use you until you get untied. Matthew 21, let me read it in. Y'all remember this story. The Bible says the donkey was tied to a post. Uh -uh. Jesus said these words, and, and this is so good. Jesus tells his disciples, listen, it's so good. He said, you loose them and let me lead them. Let me loose them and let me lead them. Let me untie them, let me loose them, and let me lead them. I'm going to say it again until y'all get this in your spirit. Let God loose you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let God untie your past. Because I feel one of the biggest battles we have at churches, 21st century, we got people in here today that's holding on to a 20-year hurt. And in the name of Jesus Christ, today... You're loosed. You're loosed. Come on, y'all. Help this pastor this morning. You're loosed. You're God right now in the spirit. God is untying you from something that has been holding you for year after year. Oh, you look good at church, but when you go home, you're a mess. Uh, so, so, so y'all ready for this? Loose him and lead him. God says, listen to me, I'm almost done, I'm almost finished. God says, if you really want me to use you, how many of y'all want to be used? Yes. I want to see your hands again, come on. No, if you want God to you, raise your hand in the name of Jesus Christ. You say, Brian, why do you preach with authority? Because pastors, if you're a pastor, you better have authority. So I want to be used, I'm going to be used. Watch this, I'm going to be used. I am being used. He says, let them loose. And let me lead them. What is this? So good. God said these words. Check it out. Don't just take up my cross, but He said, follow me. See, we're good about it. I'm going to take up the cross. Don't watch, watch the comma. Watch, watch the comma. Watch the comma. Because it's so easy to say, yeah, I'm a Christian. I'm going to heaven. But what are you doing with your salvation? Yeah. Now let's talk. Now let's have a dialogue. Take up my cross and follow me. My sheep know my voice, comma, and they follow me. Are y'all hearing this preacher this morning? Listen to this. It says, as long as you're tied to the post, the scenery never changes. Drew, I thought about this, man. Every day that donkey was tied to the same post, seeing the same scenery, same scenery, same church service, same church service, same church service, same family condition, same this, that, and the other. Every day that donkey was tied to the same post and seeing the same, same scenery. Watch this, Joel. You're going to like this. This will make an associate pastor jump. Here's what I'm saying. As long as you're tied to the post, your scenery will never change. Every day of your life, oh, listen, you'll see the same thing, same attitude, same family, same everything. Oh, hallelujah. Feel the Holy Ghost. If you're tied to alcohol, that's all you'll ever see is alcohol. Can I, I believe I'm at the right church this morning. Yeah. If, you're try, if you're tied to the same post of drug addiction, that's all you'll see every day. Drugs, 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 drugs. I'm going somewhere. Drugs, drugs, drugs. That's all you ever see. Because you're tied to the same post day in, day out. God sent me on assignment today and it's going to be, that curse is going to be broken. I'm telling you, people are going to be set free today in this house. Not because of me, but because of him. Hallelujah. If you're tied to religion, 
when, when, when the Holy Ghost shows up, it's odd to you because it don't match your scenery. <laughs> it don't match what you've always seen at church. God, I'm hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're, uh, if you're tied to guilt, you'll be just like your daddy all your life. You're no good. You'll quit college like everybody else did. You're carrying shame around your life. Poor little pitiful me. That's all you'll see. Watch. I know people today that's 60, 70, 80 years old. And they're tied to the same post. Seeing the same scenery. I wrote this down. Note takers. The scenery of your life will never change. As long as you're tied to it. That's what I love about the healing place. That's what I love about Mike Kiger. Man, 75 years old, gets on, a, gets on a church van every Sunday, goes to the healing place. Sometimes two stops over there. He believes in it. That's why I love what God does at Elkhorn. Because I see some people that's being untied from the same old scenery that you've seen all your life. Now watch this. Y'all ready? I'm, I'm pray to see you guys come. I'm going to wrap this up and land this plane. So, so my prayer for me, my prayer for you, my prayer for this church, my prayer for our Facebook family, my prayer for anybody watching today is that we will allow in the name of Jesus Christ for God to untie you, to loose you, and to lead you and me to a scenery that's going to change our lives forevermore. Here's the good news. Courtney, this is so good. So the disciples went up, went to the same scenery, the same post where the donkeys were at. There was a colt and, and a donkey. The Bible says that they untied them. They loosed them. I'm going somewhere. This is so good. I can't contain myself. And all of a sudden, when they loosed them, Jesus was on the burden. Jesus was on their back. And they started going down a street. Hallelujah. That he's never been on before. Wednesday night people got touched by the Holy Ghost. That the Holy Ghost has never touched like that before. You went down Jerusalem Street. Watch this. This is so good. And this is Bible. And if you want to fight about it. Fight God on it. And you will lose. All of a sudden that donkey. Had Jesus. On his back. Y'all realize this is Passover week, right? Y'all realize we're going into Jerusalem. You realize this Sunday coming up, April the 4th is Easter. We're right on time. But before we get to the empty tomb, you got to be untied. You got to be untied. It makes me sick that people have to go to other churches and get untied. It makes me sick that people have to have a revival to get untied. It makes it, it upsets me that you got the Holy Ghost in here right now. And if you walk tied up, bound up, it's your fault. So this donkey with Jesus on his back, untied, loosed, being led now by the right person, Jesus. All of a sudden, Joy, here's worship fill the atmosphere. Hosanna to the highest. This donkey went to a place that's never been before. And all of a sudden, it wasn't tied to a post. It was loose with Jesus on his back. And so what I'm saying is this. Jesus was on the donkey's back. <laughs> the coat's back, actually. Riding down a new street, never been before. And all of a sudden, instead of hearing what was going on in the world, it was hearing the praises of God. Can I tell y'all, listen to me, that should be the church. Somebody walked in tied up, bound up, and God's going to loosen you today. You're going to go down a new street called Jerusalem Street, and you're going to start hearing praises erupt in your spirit, erupt in your soul, and God's going to set you free. If you believe this, Pastor, I need you to stand to your feet, open your mouth, and give God some praise in this house. Come on. He 
got on a wild coat, never been ridden, unqualified. I've got too much sin in my life. You take it up with Jesus. You tell Jesus that his blood wasn't enough for you. I'm telling y'all today, if y'all will listen to me, God wants to untie you. He wants to take you down Jerusalem Street. And he wants praise to just erupt in your life. Why why do y'all think we praise God? It's not because y'all are talented. Y'all got a gift. Y'all's job is to lay down the palm branches so we can come riding in on it. I want to ask y'all a question. I'm done. (laughs) Are you willing for God to untie you this morning? Don't, Don't sit there and go, yeah, I am. And then you sit there. That ain't untie. Are you willing for God to untie you, loose you, and lead you away? Watch from what has been holding you back. Are y'all willing? Are we willing? Be honest, praise him. Are y'all willing for God to loose y'all and put a new song on your heart? Or are we so stuck? If we don't do like this, I'll just leave that church and I'll do it my way. Yeah, you will, and you'll be a miserable fool all the rest of your life. Listen, this church is not about your way, my way. It's about His way. I'm telling y'all in Jesus Christ's name, God is wanting to loose. He's wanting to untie. He's wanting to start leading your life. And listen, if that donkey would have stayed tied to the same post, it would have seen the same scenery. But God says, I've got so much more for you. Let me lead you. And I'll take you to a place that you've never seen before. Could you imagine what that donkey, you know, one of them got big ears. Could you imagine what that donkey was thinking? All that donkey's life. Listen, it was tied to the same post, same scenery, same situation. And all of a sudden, this donkey had a burden on his back. Because God said, I'm going to carry the burden. He had a burden on his back. And all of a sudden, Hosanna to the highest. Praises start erupting. New life, new, new scenery. Palm branches being laid down. I don't want, here's what I think about. I don't want us to get to heaven and say, man, listen. I don't want us to get to heaven and say, God, you had a palm branch life for me. And I settled being tied to a post. I love you, I love you, I love you, and I love you. Let God untie you this morning. Let the burden get on your back. And watch this. I got proof of this. He will lead you to an area that you've never seen. Never experienced. Never been before. That's how much God loves us. My question to you is this. Do you want to be untied or do you want to stay tied up to the post? God wants to take us to a new place, new environment, new scenery. But first, you've got to be untied, loosed, and let the Lord start leading you. Y'all got me this morning? Somebody say amen. You got the word this morning. You'll never be able to hold the blessings tied to a post. You'll never be able to do it. So here's the deal. Wherever y'all are at, I don't know where y'all are at. I know where I was at. And I want to tell y'all this. I really believe with all my heart you got a new pastor standing in front of you. And man, listen. I don't know what this this year's gonna look like. I just know who's on my back. I just know who's on my back. It's crazy, man. My attitude's changed. My life has changed. Church is actually beautiful now. It's not a job. This is a beautiful life. This is a beautiful place. Elkhorn, we're so blessed. But it took, I went, what? I was tied to a post and didn't even stink and realize it. 
Because every once in a while, I'd feel Jesus sweep by. Boy, how many of you know? Uh, I'm trying to be good. No, I'm not. Every once in a while, Beth, I would just feel him sweep by. Every once in a while on a Sunday, I'd just feel him sweep by. And then I'd wait another month or two and sweep by. How many of you know it's different when he sweeps by or if he's riding your back? See, Glenn, you can play the piano tied to a post. I'm looking you dead in the eye this morning. Are you untied playing this? Bill, anybody, I'm not anybody, I'm sorry. You can, you can play that, that guitar. I can tie your legs to a post and you can sit there and play. Are you untied? Are you doing what God told you to do? No, you're not. No, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Listen to me. It's time. I know that woman. No, no, listen. I'm going to tell you. No, listen to me. Because this here's about Beth. I'll offend her really quick. But I love her. Beth Cochran, you are loosed. You worship. Listen to me. I ain't worried about them right now. I still think you've got one leg tied to the post. Does that, that speak anything to you? you? I know you say, God, I love you. I know, I know. Y'all can raise your hands and be tied to a post. There's a difference. I remember a little girl named Beth called to lead worship. I'm asking you today to let God untie you completely from that post. Lead us. You got me? You got me? I love you. I, I love you. Love you. Love you. So I just prophesy today in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit on the 28th day of March that Jesus Christ has loosed, untied the donkey. And if y'all don't want it, this may not be the church for you. But here's what I'm telling you, your pastor. I'm untied. I'm loosed. Brian, what's that mean? I don't know. He's just on my back. And here's what I'm telling you. We will see more salvations than ever before. We'll see marriages come back together. Life's changed. We'll see things happen in the spiritual realm that a lot of people may not see, Jenna. But we will, thus saith the Lord. We got, we got the King of Kings on our back. And I've never seen a church fail with a king on their back. And in Jesus Christ's name, y'all look at me. God loose you. Loose you. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's time to go down Jerusalem Street. Some of you have been tied to a post and you don't even realize it. So I double dog dare you today. Ask God. Ask him. He talked back. Say, Lord, what, what post am I tied to? And see what he does. See how he answers. And I promise you, your life will change. Is everybody good? Is everybody good? Is everybody all right? So now I'm going to close with what I started asking you out at the beginning of this series. Y'all ready? <laughs> Can God use you? Are you usable? That's the question. I know y'all love God. But we need some post diggers up in here. We, we need some post pullers up in here. Time to pull the post up. Ryan, I don't know about that old Holy Ghost. Why, you know more than he does? So in Jesus' name, I'm finished. I love you. Praise God for you. But I pray today in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That you, he will loose you from the post. Father God, have your way. I've done what you told me to do. I love these precious people, God, but you love them a whole lot more. God, I pray today they let you ride in on their backs. Loose us, God. Untie us from the post. Set us free, God. Change our scenery. Change our scenery. 
Lord, I really believe with all my heart, Lord, we're going to see the latter rain. So, God, I know you're positioning us. Elkhorn, I really believe God is positioning us to hold the rain. So, Father God, have your way. In Jesus' name, I pray this prayer, believing. God, today, something good's happening in here. In Jesus' name, amen. This altar's open. This altar's open. And maybe it's been a while since you've been to the new scenery of the altar. <laughs> maybe, you, maybe you're allergic to it. Maybe today God's saying, you know what? I want to ride your back. And when you get to that altar, I want to push you down. Right here. Maybe you don't even know him as your Lord and Savior. Congratulations. Welcome to church. We'll take you just as you are. Warts, wounds, and all. So this altar's open. You come. Lord, loose us from the post. Set us free. Lord, may we carry you into Jerusalem. In Jesus' name.